Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today, we're going to continue with these uh, kind of word studies we've been doing. Uh, we, we started it yesterday. Uh, there are certain words and terms that are in the scriptures and that are commonly used in uh, Christianity that um, sometimes they're misused. So we're, we're going to continue on with that. If you didn't see the one we did yesterday, and it's uploaded on my YouTube channel and Sin City Preacher, I hope you go back and, and watch that. I thought it was, um, you know, it'll be very beneficial for you to understand the words we've already discussed. Uh, so we'll pick up where we left off on with these new words, but first let me ask Brother Eric, who's with me now, to say hi to everybody before we get started. Hello, everybody. It's me again, Daholmo. That's D-E-H-A-L-L-M-O. And uh, uh, greetings and blessings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. All right. Thank you, Brother. Okay, we'll do this like just like a, uh, just a, I'll, I'll say a word or a term, and then you can respond to it, and then I'll respond, and then we'll move on to the next one. And some of these, who knows, we may it might put us into a um, uh, a uh, you know five or minute five minute or ten minute dissertation on just one of these words, and then some of them might be we might be able to cover the the meaning in in a, in a very brief time. The first one is is the name of Jesus. Now, uh, I, of course, we know his name. I mean, some people dispute that and say he's, you can't say Jesus, you have to say Yeshua or something, you know, various other translations of his name. But that's not the, that's not the point I'm making right now. I'm just talking about uh, understanding the meaning of his name and the, and the importance of his name. So, brother, What's your reaction to that? Well, Brother Luke, uh, I believe that I've already approved of my doctrines uh, through you and my other lawyers regarding uh, the name of Jesus and how the name of Jesus is more than just a tag or a handle. There's more behind the name than that. And we're going to discuss more of that now. Okay, back to you. All right. Well, well, first, I think it's helpful to understand the actual translation and, and meaning of the name itself, Jesus. Um, if you prefer Yeshua, it, it doesn't matter. It means the same thing. It translates to God saves. So not only is his name Jesus, but his, his name Jesus describes who he is and what he does. He is God who saves. And that's the first thing a person needs to understand in, in Christianity is that it's not us that does it. Uh, we don't attain salvation through our own efforts. We need God to save us. We need to call on God to do the saving. We need to trust God to do it. And his name is Jesus, which means God who saves. Uh, so that's the important thing to understand about what his name means. So he certainly was named appropriately. And then also you've got verses in the scriptures uh, that say, um, there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. So this Jesus, this name of Jesus, the scriptures say his name is that significant. There was no other name. So don't call on the name Muhammad or Allah or or uh, uh, what's his name, Dope Francis, or, uh, or uh, Buddha. Don't call on any other name. It's only the name of Jesus. And th there's another scripture that says there's salvation in his name. So in his name itself, there is salvation. When we appeal to this person, Jesus, to save us, he does. Uh, and so... Brother, uh, anything else you want to add to that, the importance and, under, and the definition of his name? Um, I think you uh, handled it very well. 
and uh, it's very important that we handle his name properly. Now there be some among us who we friended who aren't handling his name properly. And we must deal with those folks as well. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. I'm, I'm glad you phrased it that way. It's important we handle his name properly because um, there are two groups of people come to my mind um, reacting to your statement. There's a group of people that don't, they first of all, they hate the name of Jesus. They're antichrists. Um, they, they hate Jesus. And um, I talked about antichrist in some of my other videos. Uh, there's one title, Antichrist is here right now. And um, the scriptures tell us that everyone who does not believe in Jesus as the Christ and, and as Savior is an antichrist. Uh, so you don't have to, if you want to think of an antichrist as being a singular individual that's going to come at the end of time and take over the world, that, that's, that's fine. But uh, the scriptures tell us that antichrist is plural, not singular. It's all people who are against Christ. Um, uh, so there's that group of people that don't honor his name and just actually disdain his name. There's another group of people that it particularly bother me, and that's the people who even identify themselves as Christians of some kind, and yet I, I hear them using his name in vain, like in a casual way. I mean, they get angry and they say, uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus. So, you know, it's to me, I, I could never use his name in anger or disgust or as a, as a word to express disgust. Uh, to me, his name has to can always be revered and only spoken of, spoken with reverence and love. And, and, uh, and then there's another group of people so there's two now for you to talk about, brother, but the third group of people that comes to my mind are those people who uh, they, they revere Jesus, they love him, they worship him, they trust him, they're saved, and yet they keep their Christianity in a closet. Right? I have another video called titled Closet Christians, and these are the people that they don't want to talk about the Christianity. They want to keep it private. And uh, comes to mind that Jesus' statement that if if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Uh, so um, we should just there's nothing we should love to do more, and nothing we should be more happy or I don't want to say proud to do, but we should not be ashamed. Uh, or embarrassed to identify ourselves as Christians. I will I'll use the word Christian because Christian can mean just about anything. You know, all the people's different definitions. You know, what if you say, are you a Christian? And you ask them what a Christian is, they can come up with any weird thing. But I use it Christian because a Christian is emphasizing Christ. And it's uh, we're not we're not backing down. We're not cowering and say and just saying, oh, yeah, I believe in God. No, believing in God generically is, is uh, uh, not, for, Christians should not do that. We, we, we should not, we should always reference God as our Savior, God, Jesus Christ. And, and if, we, if we're afraid to do that, then there will be a backlash because people can, uh, people can talk about God in a generic sense and it's, it's, they're probably not going to catch too much flack except for an extreme anti-theist. But, but, for the most part, you can talk about God generically uh, and be, uh, not be attacked. But if you, if you talk about God being Jesus Christ, our Savior God, the only Savior, his sufficiency and his, the exclusivity of Jesus, then you can expect to be attacked. In fact, that's what he said. He said, uh, he said do not think that I came to bring peace, but rather division. Families will divide over me. Father against son, husband against wife. The name Jesus causes division. Which side are you on? Are you with him or are you against him? So that's why this name Jesus is 
so important. So I, 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 I'll review three things I'll ask you to respond to if you don't remember, but the people who hate the name, hate Jesus, they're antichrist. The people who are Christians but don't revere his name and respect and reverence for his name at all times. And then the people who are, they're Christians, but they just keep it private. Brother? Okay, Brother Luke, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, I will go ahead and respond to the first one, the Antichrists, and then you can re-enunciate the other one, and then uh, so on and so on. Uh, that would be more convenient for me uh, in my uh, youthful uh, ways of thinking. Okay, now, uh, as regarding the Antichrists, you're absolutely correct, Brother Luke. Uh, the Antichrist does have a head, and he does have a body, and his head is Judas, and his body is the disciples of Judas. And uh, you don't want to be a part of that family. Okay, uh, back to you. What was the other, uh, the second one? The second group of people are those people who um, they, they identify themselves as Christian of some kind, and yet they don't seem to have reverence for the name Jesus. They, they casually throw about his name uh, in a, as a, uh, uh, in, in, with an anger. They don't, they don't have complete reverence for his name. Okay, Brother Luke. Uh... I'm well aware of those. Everybody's well aware of those uh, folks. And uh, I don't hold it against them personally. Uh, if they don't have light shining around them to expose that their ways, then they're going to do that. In my kingdom, that doesn't happen. If it does, uh, we shine a spotlight on it, and uh, it goes away right quick. Okay, and uh, the third one was what, Brother Luke? The third one is uh, a person that is, uh, um, they, they are a Christian. Uh, they believe correctly, and they're saved, and yet, and they revere his name, but they don't use his name publicly. They seem to be, like, embarrassed. Uh, if they're a group of people, they don't, uh, um, you know, publicly identify themselves as Christians. They kind of are meek and in the closet. Okay, Brother Luke. Uh, I'm glad you brought up that category of Christians uh, because I know them very well as well. And uh, a lot of them are actually my disciples. And uh, I've uh, forbidden them to speak until they have uh, been approved of their uh, message. And all they are commanded to do is love one another. And uh, as long as they keep that one rule, they don't have to say a thing. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. I, I really appreciate your, your take on that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of softened my position because for these people, I have a lot of, uh, I don't want to say disdain, but I, I, it, it, I don't respect people who are... Uh, uh, are kind of embarrassed or timid about their Christianity. Uh, and yet, you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, they're, they're not required to boldly go out and praise his name and preach his name and preach the gospel as, as, as we love to do. Not every, we have different personalities, and, they're, and, they're, and their salvation is not contingent upon that either. So they're, they, they can be truly saved, and yet, uh, you're right. Um, Maybe their 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 personality and their calling, their their ministry is is something entirely different. So I, I I might be too harsh on them, but you're right. If if they are maybe as they grow in confidence and grow in knowledge, they will be able to uh, speak about Jesus to their friends and family and the public uh, more easily. But if they are following that royal law of Jesus gave us to love each other. Uh, and I'm sure Jesus is, is pleased with them, too. All right, brother. Um, 
Anything else before I can move on to the next term? Um, I think uh, we're ready to move on. I was very happy with how that uh, first uh, part turned out. Okay, back to you. All right. Uh, here's a word that's very common in, in the scriptures, and, and uh, um, a lot of uh, a lot of the people we know are, uh, are quick to use this this word. The word is grace. Uh, how, how would you define grace and apply it in a biblical sense? Okay, Brother Luke. Uh, grace is something we should all be familiar with. I remember when I first got born again, I had this insatiable desire to study God's Word. And everything took on a new meaning for me. And grace was one of those words that took on a new meaning when I came alive in Christ and I understood what it meant for the first time for real. And all who, hey, hush up. <laughs> okay, back to you, Brother Luke. All right. Um, well, if we look at the word grace or gracious, apart from scriptures for a moment, uh, it, it, if someone is gracious towards you, or if someone you go to someone's home and they are they're they're hosting you at a at a dinner party, and you say they are a very gracious host. Uh, people under can understand what that means. That boy, they are just exceedingly kind, more kind than we deserve. I mean, they just went out of their way to be really really nice to us. I mean, I mean, they hardly even know us, and look how nice they were to us. I mean, that's how we would say they were very gracious. Well, the scriptures talk about how God is gracious and the, the grace of God. And we see this throughout the scriptures, back all the way through, not just New Testament, all through the Old Testament, the New Testament. And, and salvation has always been, from the very beginning all the way to the now and in all through future, is always because of the grace of God. God doesn't have to give us eternal life in heaven. He, he, he's gracious in, 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 in offering that to us, providing that for us. He's gracious. A, a, um, probably the most common definition that people use, uh, that I hear most often about the word grace relating to Christianity, is God's unmerited favor towards man. Uh, in other words, um, unmerited means that we haven't earned it and we don't deserve it. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, exceeding kindness to us that we don't, don't deserve, far beyond anything we could ever claim we deserve. So that's what grace is, and salvation has always been by grace. It's by, only because of the grace of God that anybody could be saved. Um, so, all right, anything to add to that before we, we move on? Uh, I agree with you on that 100%, Brother Luke. And uh, there's something we sh could possibly uh, expound upon further uh, indefinitely because that's just the way it is. It's eternal. And the things of God are eternal and they can be constantly uh, pondered and revealed and... Uh, discovered constantly. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will expound upon it a little bit further since you uh, kind of urged me to. Or, or uh, There's some verses that have the word grace in, in it that I think are very pertinent to our salvation. And one is Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, verses 8, and uh, I'll read, I'll say verse 9 also. Uh, the scripture says, uh, It is by grace 
we are saved. Grace, it's by grace we're saved. By the grace of God, we get saved. And then it says, through faith. We, God is gracious to us, and we receive his graciousness through our faith. And we see, receive salvation through faith. So it says, by grace we are saved. So we get two things through our faith. We receive the grace of God. We receive the salvation of God through faith. And, 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 uh, uh, and the faith, of course, must be in Jesus. It can't be just, just faith in anything can't be faith in ourselves, our ability to perform and be a good person. It can't be uh, faith in our ability to be a religious person and practice some religion diligently. Uh, our faith must be in this person, Jesus, in who he is and what he's done for us. So, for by grace are you saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, this, this grace and salvation is not uh, from yourself. It's the gift of God. The gift of God. That's the next word we're going to talk about. Okay? But uh, before we go on to that, salvation and grace is a gift that we get from God through faith, not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, and it's not of works. That means that that it's, it's not based upon uh, our own merit, our own performance, our own efforts. It's solely a gift, and it's solely by the grace of God. Uh, and it says, so that no one can boast. Obviously, we couldn't go around boasting about, look, look, I, I, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven because I earned it. I deserve it. I'm really good. I'm superior to these other people who couldn't get here. That would be boasting. The scriptures tell us, we can't, it's not possible for us to boast. We have nothing to boast about except in Christ. We can boast in Christ, what he's done for us. And then another verse that is important to understand, to understand grace. The scripture says that, uh, um, that we're saved by grace, and, and, and it's, it's not of works. Uh, no, it's no more works. And, and otherwise, grace would not be grace. In other words, uh, grace and works are like oil and water. They can't be mixed together. Uh, grace and works are, is, is a, a oxymoron. It's two contradicting concepts that cannot be put together. Otherwise, they explode and nullify each other. Uh, they cannot exist together, grace and works, because grace means no works, and works means no grace. So you can't say you're, say you're saved by grace and works. They, it's some kind of combination of them. If That's what all the religions are telling us. That, yeah, God will save you if you do the right works. He'll be gracious and give you salvation, but you got to do the works. Well, that just cancels out what grace is. So that's the important thing to understand about this, this grace. Um, brother, your, your response to that before we go on to the next word. Brother Luke, I'd like to uh, propose that grace is the supernatural ability for God's power to flow through you. What do you say about that? Well... It's because of God's grace that we can get that power. And that power is comes from the Holy Spirit. And uh, all of us who did, in fact, put our faith in Jesus, and we, 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 we accepted the, the grace and salvation of God, and we, we received the Holy Spirit living inside us, that Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, this shirt relates to that. I'm going to ask you to read it here. What's that say? It says... Brainwashed. What's the verse number? Um, I can't see that. Wait a minute. Hold okay, the phone. Go ahead, go ahead and say it. Say it now. It's, uh, I see it. It's Romans 12, 2. 12, 21. No, no, 12, 2. Okay. All right. Now, read the back of my shirt. I don't know if I can. 
get a position. Tell me lower or higher, farther away. Uh, to the left. <laughs> oh, the other left. <laughs> lower. <laughs> lower. Lower. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, okay, stop moving. Hold the phone. It says, be transformed in the renewing of the mind. Okay, that's the only part I can see. Uh, it says, uh, be not conformed. Doesn't it say that? Be not conformed, but be transformed. Well, uh, <laughs> it's up too high, and uh, you're kind of slouched over. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's look up Romans 12, too, here real quick here. Okay, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, uh, so that verse relates to what your point was about uh, the, the power of God working through us. Uh, so we could not receive the Holy Spirit. We could not receive the transforming power of the Holy Spirit to change our lives and to do the good works that God wants us to do. We could not do any of that if it wasn't for the grace of God being uh, available first. So that's how I would relate that to your, your question about, I don't remember how you phrased it, about the grace of God giving us power or something. How, how did you state it? Uh, the grace of God is the ability to allow God's power to flow through us. Now, the reference for that would be uh, the reference that uh, talks about uh, the same power that raised up Christ from the dead worketh in us. And I don't remember the reference for that. But I'm sure Neil will if he wants to hang, to hang with us, right? Hello, Neil. What's up, Barkley Hillbilly? Now I remember you. I will never forget you, Neil. Okay, back to you guys. Okay, hello, Brother Neil. Uh, did you, uh, have you uh, listened to any of this uh, before you joined? I was trying to. My homework was getting in the way. <laughs> okay. And, and you read the conditions of, of uh, jo joining the Hangout, the, the Statement of Faith, and everything. We're in, we're in agreement on all that, I hope. Yes, sir. Okay, brother. Thank you. Uh, all right. What we're doing is we're going through uh, these just verse, certain words and terms in the Scriptures and discussing them. Uh, some of them are uh, mis misused, misapplied. And we were just talking about the, ter the word grace. So uh, if you would like to respond, you, I'll give you an opportunity on each one of these to give your response. Uh, I've already talked about the meaning of the word grace, and uh, we're going to move on, and I'll give you a chance to uh, give, your, give us your take on what grace means to you. Yeah, no, um, I'll just... There's a whole debate between Calvinism and Arminianism going on on Google+. Plus. I don't really want to take a part of it because I don't really believe in theological or philosophical isms in, to a certain extent. I try to stay away from isms. They're kind of bad for my health, if you know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, um, with grace, you know, people that are against grace will call it hyper-grace pre uh, hyper preaching. And I would say I don't see it that way. I think, I think grace uh, can be used you know, in any way, especially with preaching, you know, I, I, and some people need a hellfire preacher to tell them they're going to hell and blah, 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 but, you know, I, I think some people also need the other side of that, where somebody's telling you, 
you know what I'm saying? You're, you know, God has His grace for you, and you don't have to go to hell. That kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I think there's there's two different ways to go about preaching to somebody, and it's definitely uh, it it takes an impact on everybody. But I don't think our words really um, affect people as much as we think it they do. Uh, whether somebody wants to make the choice through free will, you know what I'm saying, uh, to uh, through free will to accept God in their life or not is, is up to them. But yeah, that's all i got to say about grace, and Tommy is my grace teacher. So I agree. All, right, brother. <laughs> all right, brother. Thank you, Neo. Uh, let me ask uh, Brother Tommy. Oh, I, I should have given a Neo a chance to introduce himself. I'll come back to him in a minute. But Brother Tommy, say hi to everybody. And uh, I just have one question for you first. You, you have... Um, have you listened to any of this before you joined? you know where, what we're doing today? No, sir. I'm unacquainted, uh, or I did not listen before I came in. I just yeah. kind of quickly came in when I noticed it. Well, I'm not going to back up, but I'll tell you the, the basic premise. I have a list of, of uh, words and terms that I have posted here in the comment section here you can check out. And we're just discussing what the mean, these words mean and also the, uh, uh, the sometimes how they're misapplied. And uh, uh, so, uh, f say hi to everybody. Tell us who you are, and then the word that we talked about. We talked about the name of Jesus, and then we talked about the word grace. The next word we're going to go on to is the word gift. Okay, so uh, go ahead, brother Tommy. Thank you, thank you for your hospitality, my brother. Um, hey, Neo, you're my grace teacher too, and uh, all of you are. Or, or so many of you are. I may not be acquainted with all of you, tell you the truth. But um, uh, uh, both you and Sin City Preacher are, are vessels of me beholding grace. And I'm grateful to know you. I don't mean to lay it on too thick, but it is sincere. Anyway, I'm St. Tommy. Uh, I hold belief in Christ Jesus. I believe I am in Christ Jesus. Uh, whether I hold the perfect faith or the perfect doctrine or not I, I don't know but I do believe in him that he was crucified and and buried and raised from the dead on the third day for the forgiveness of sin and uh, I'm happy to be here all right okay thank you brother Tommy uh, brother Neo uh, I want to back up to you and just give you a chance just to introduce yourself just take a minute and uh, tell everyone who you are yeah, I'm just a guy floating around the internet. I'm a Christian. I sometimes don't label myself a Christian. I wait till other people label me a Christian or not, because you can meet some other Christians and uh, they may not view you as a Christian. Although I don't see that, you know, I don't, I don't see it as wrong, but whatever. But uh, no, uh, I just enjoy listening to philosophical, theological, and word salad debates and and people talking about uh, grace, like our Sir Tommy here. He's really good with understanding how. Uh, grace works, and then some people get what he's saying wrong. They try to take it, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 he's not saying that. I get it all the time. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, it, it's hard to talk about one thing when people want you to talk about the other thing. You know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, yeah, no, other than that, I'm just on here. I've been on here for like two years. Uh, I'm a college student in, uh, in uh, uh, computer science, network engineering. I'm trying to get into a job pretty soon, but uh, I just had my son not too long ago and all that other good stuff, so yeah. I'd, I'd like to respond to that briefly if I can, Bill, my brother. Uh, yeah, I, I hope, Neo, that I do not promote licentiousness. I certainly don't want to. In my promotions of grace, some are disturbed by how I might uh, declare my opinion or proclaim my opinion about grace uh, and some some seem to see it as promoting licentiousness or promoting immaturity or promoting sin or or something that's evil I, 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 and I hate that and I hope indeed that I do not promote licentiousness nor evil nor immaturity uh, I my intent is to promote the grace of God his forgiveness of sin and that our sins are forgiven and uh, so but but thank you for your honoring comments Mia thank you okay uh, all right now for, uh, for, for 
uh, Neil and Tommy, uh, the other person on our discussion here is his brother Eric. His channel is D Halmo, and also he has a channel named Berkeley Hillbilly. So now everybody knows each other. Uh, I would let me respond to your uh, your statement there, brother Tommy, about. Uh, promoting licentiousness. I, I made a video probably a couple of years ago it's titled In Defense of the Saints and uh, I was coming to the defense of all of those people who are uh, teaching uh, Christianity as we find it in the scriptures not not uh, through tra the traditions of man but what the Christianity we, that's in the Bible, biblical Christianity and that is that that uh, we're, we're not saved by personal merit personal merit does not factor into getting saved or mean, uh, keeping salvation or approving someone's salvation. Uh, it's strictly by the grace of God through faith alone in Christ alone. And then some people will argue, well, you're giving people a license to sin. Their, their behavior, their, their, their conduct does not factor in at all. So you're giving them a license to sin. And in that video, I said that, uh, no, uh, I, I don't know anybody that's uh, any Christian that I'm familiar with that is teaching on YouTube or anything that is saying go ahead and sin all you want no big deal no one's saying that we're just saying that if you sin you're not going to lose your salvation you probably have some consequences in your life because you're doing bad things so you get going to get bad results but you're not going to lose your salvation o o over your sin all your sins have been paid for anyway because when Jesus died on the cross all your sins that they're all future sins to Jesus, so uh, uh, yeah, it's a it's a charge that uh, has uh, been uh, falsely uh, charged against us uh, as a whole. So uh, yeah, when you when you talk about the uh, the true message of salvation and it's by grace alone through faith alone and Christ alone, no, we're not encouraging people to sin, but we're saying that. Your, your salvation is not based upon personal merit, that's all. Where, where I, have, I have had some, uh, some confrontation or had some, uh, uh, some good men rise and make accusations to me about uh, where I've had trouble is being among good people who are entangled in some very immature, obviously immature behaviors, uh, 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 youthful. Uh, I, I, when I spend time and seek to encourage other individuals, good people who are entangled in youthful lust or or very debatable lifestyles, or or other good people who call themselves things like atheist or Roman Catholic or. Um, Democrats, even Democrats, um, uh, as I seek to assure these good people uh, that there is peace with God through Christ Jesus and that our sins are forgiven, I encourage them to believe in Christ Jesus, in what he has done. That has sometimes been interpreted as endorsing their immaturity uh, simply because I do not overtly condemn their immaturity unto hell fire or condemn them as evil beings. Uh, I do not see many of our neighbors as evil beings. I see them possibly, possibly as being closet believers in Christ Jesus and very good people, even though overtly, uh, according to the flesh, they may indeed be entangled in some very uh, wicked or or sticky things and uh, uh, and that causes some trouble to some of our good neighbors if I do not condemn uh, being a Democrat or condemn licentious entanglement if I don't condemn that and if I don't condemn certain individuals that seems to be very troubling to some of our neighbors and and I find that unfortunate I feel very misunderstood but but thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to share these things thank you all right, Brother Tommy, I, I, I would say that you don't know Brother Eric, I don't think, you've met, 
But Brother Eric uh, made a similar statement uh, before you joined us. When I was talking about the, the term, the, the name of Jesus, um, uh, I, I, I'll recap it very, very briefly, but there, there's a group of people that they hate the name of Jesus, and then there's another group of people that they, even though they're, they're professing Christians, they don't seem to revere the name of Jesus. They don't mind being angry and saying, oh, Jesus, and, 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 and they don't see the reverence and respect. And then there's another group of people that they're, they're Christians, and they're, uh, they love Jesus, they revere his name, but they don't want to come out publicly and talk about it. They keep their faith real private. They're what I call closet Christians. And, and Brother Eric was... Um, he took. He came to their defense. Uh, I was a little harsh on him, but he came to their defense, kind of as you did. He says they are his disciples, uh, because uh, uh, he as long as they've got uh, the royal law, they're just loving each other, loving people. Then he's not going to be too strict on them in terms of being bold, boldly proclaiming the name of Jesus the way that you know we are doing here. I mean, not everybody's going to be bold preachers the way that we are. Wow. So. Uh, um, I will ask Brother Eric uh, to take a, a moment here and, and respond to everything he's heard. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Luke, and I'm very happy that uh, Neil and Brother Tommy, St. Tommy, has joined us. And although St. Tommy does not know me, I know St. Tommy very well, and I know he comes from a rough neighborhood. And that's why I've assigned my secret security team on his case to look after him. Okay, back to you guys. Good job. All right. Uh, so uh, let's let's move on here to the next word on my list here. And by the way, if anybody wants to add a word to the list that you think would be a word that's worth discussing here, that's fine. But if you if you, if you can see in the comment section, I don't know if you can see it. Let me. I think that what happens is a uh, uh, if you join after it was posted, it won't show up. Control C. Let me post it in again here. Control V. I I have a strong desire to make one other comment, if I could. Yeah, go I, ahead. Yes, uh, what I heard you say about some believers being closet believers and not as bold about proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, or or being overtly evangelical. That rang very true. Uh, I, perhaps, perhaps everyone who is in Christ Jesus, whether they proclaim it openly or if they're very, very private about such beliefs, everyone who in Christ who is in Christ Jesus perhaps is a a minister of Christ Jesus by default, even for getting up out of bed and breathing in the morning. They are. Vessels of God filled with the Spirit, or at least indwelt with the Holy Spirit, and whether they are called to be evangelical in Africa or on G plus, or or whether they are called to show mercy, or whether they are called to for a season of maybe helping at the soup kitchen, or even called to a season of just smiling. Or just being in someone's presence in a in, in a in a good way, uh, they are. I submit for your consideration that everyone in Christ Jesus may not be an evangelist in the same way, but that all are an evangelist in the way, the perfect way that God has made them uh, by default, just for breathing. Appreciate it, Bill. Thank you. Okay. Uh you're confusing me with Brother Bill uh, Cuthbert, uh, the Panda Man evangelist. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, brother, sir. Brother Luke, okay? Luke. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. Forgive me. If someone is, uh, uh, I think you have a Brother Bill, when I'm, uh, oh, there he is now. He must have heard us talking about him. I was just about to say I would consider it a, an honor to be uh, uh, confused with Brother Bill. Uh, but let, I don't want to give him a chance to talk yet. He's, he's joining us quite late, so I'm going to punish him by making him wait a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but first, uh, uh, Brother Tommy, you, you said something about the uh, uh, everybody is a minister. Uh, and 
I, I've, I've been teaching that same principle for, for, for many, many years, that once we get born again and we are indwelled with that Holy Spirit, uh, everybody's ministry begins at that point. But many people, they don't even know they have a ministry. And some people, if they, they know they're supposed to have a ministry, and they, but, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what their calling is. And, uh, so, and some people are being really faithful, diligent ministers, and some people are neglecting their ministry. But everyone, when they're born again, becomes a minister. And so uh, how, how that plays out over the rest of their life, uh, I don't know. But that's where the Bema Seat, uh, where we get uh, our rewards for our ministry, is uh, it will be decided. Uh, Brother, Brother Bill, uh, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, it's been a long time since I talked to you. Glad you could be here. All right, all right. Look, 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 what have I done? If I, if I put the nose on me, or is that someone else done that? I don't know if you can hear me. Or... No, it's got to be you. Is that I've, I've written off accidentally click? Hang on, I think I've. Hang on a minute, that's my silly program. I've accidentally pressed the button. Hang on. Oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> I like your new hairdo. Oh, I know that. Brother Bill. It didn't last long, but. I, I hear you. I was just saying, yeah, just heard what you just said, and I just put in a chat chat bar that it took me 20 plus years before I started evangelizing so yeah I was a Christian for, in 1991 I became a Christian and it wasn't in until about 2008 that I actually started doing stuff so yeah I was on milk for a long time I must have been thirsty Okay, um, welcome, Brother Bill. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, I know you very well, but there might be somebody watching now that hasn't met you yet, so take just 60 seconds and just introduce yourself, Brother Bill. Hello, I, my name is Bill, and my new channel, which is my main channel, I've actually entitled it Bill Cuthbert After Myself, <laughs> because I had the Panda Man Evangelist and the panda man and people were getting confused and didn't know who to subscribe to who to watch so I've made it simple if you want to watch my evangelism videos go to the panda man formerly evangelist if you want to just listen to me waffle on and join hangouts and make videos subscribe to me make me a bill cuff but but nonetheless I'm still you know an evangelist at heart on this channel or on the other channel so there's more quick intro Okay, uh, brother Bill, uh, did you have you watched the previous part before you clicked on to join, or you know what we've been doing so far? No, no, I've been, believe it or not, I just come off Facebook about ten minutes ago, and I thought I see what's going on YouTube, and I see obviously one of your hangouts, so I just had to join, you know. Okay, can you see in the in the comment section the uh, list of words that I posted there that we're discussing, or do I have to repost it for you? You have to repost this. Oh, 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 it's just been reposted. Yeah, Neo's just done it. Uh, he did he repost the words or the uh, the rules. I'm talking about the list of words. All right, he's done. He's done the rules. Okay, the rules. You know, I mean, you know, you you, you certainly understand that. But here, let me repost these words so you at least have the list to refer to. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like playing a word association kind of game here, and. Uh, I say a word and I ask everybody to comment on the word and some of these words are grossly misapplied uh, uh, so that's what we're trying to address okay someone just reposted it huh okay can you see it can you see uh, the words yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so I started off by uh, doing the word uh, the term uh, the name of Jesus I discussed that we discussed the word grace the next word we're going to come to is the word gift so let me ask, starting with Brother Bill, um, what comes to mind when you hear the word gift um, in a theological sense? Well, theological, non-theological, it's, a, it's, a, it's suffering free gratis, suffering you can't earn, suffering you can't buy, and suffering that's given to you. In terms of Christendom, that free gift is salvation, which is offered to all who believe on Christ. But yet, nonetheless, the principle is the same. Gift is always free, and it's always unearned or unmerited. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to ask uh, Brother Eric for, for his reaction, then we'll go into this a little more depth. Brother Eric? Yes, Brother Luke, I think that's interesting, the order that you arranged the list. I don't know if you had uh, forethought it or it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, but there does seem to be some amazing order to the list that you submitted because grace and gift are uh, uh, amazingly intertwined and uh, something uh, we can uh, something to be pondered diligently. Okay, back to you. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, uh, a, a brief first reaction to the word gift and how it applies theologically, Brother Neil? Oh, theologically with gift? Uh, the gift of uh, being saved, the gift of uh, of all that stuff, I can't, I'm trying to put my finger on it. The gift of uh, salvation. That's what I think of. All right. Okay. And, and Brother St. Tommy, I don't want to call you brother. I keep on making the mistake of calling him brother, and he doesn't like, he wants to be St. Tommy. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I guess he stepped um, over. I, I am so sorry. Uh, Luke, um, she who must be obeyed, my beloved uh, Mrs. St. Tommy, uh, petitioned for my attention, and uh, I, I, uh, uh, I'm ashamed to say that I have been absent. Uh, could you repeat the inquiry, please? I'd be most honored if you would briefly. Uh... All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be very gracious towards you right now and, and, and tolerant of, you, of your uh, stepping away. <laughs> the, the word we're asking you to respond to now is the word gift. What comes to mind when you hear the word gift in a theological sense? Grace, grace, uh, and absolute grace. Un, unadulterated grace. Okay, all right, so we get a, a brief answer from each person about the word gift. And, 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 and Brother Bill, he defined it in a, in a kind of a secular way first, and that is uh, that uh, a gift is something that is given to you freely that you did not work for or earn, and you do not have a right to it. It's not wages that you've earned and you deserve. So that's what a gift is. And when we see the word gift in the scriptures, and uh, I, read, I quoted this verse earlier, but this is a prominent verse that has the word gift and grace and faith, all of these things, and saved in it, and that it, this is probably the best example to get the perspective of all these terms, and it is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and it says, For by grace are ye saved, so God is gracious, uh, and he will save us because he's gracious through faith, and that, that faith must be in Jesus Christ. Uh, for by grace you say through faith, and that not of yourselves. And and I believe that, that there's only one way of saying that, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The gift and the thing that is not of yourselves is the grace and salvation. And we, we didn't do anything to get the, the grace and the salvation. Uh, it's a gift. And, and when we believed on Jesus, God gives us this gift, uh, salvation. Uh, and it's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. It's not of works. It's not because of any effort you put into it. it uh, it's otherwise, so that you can never boast. So that you cannot go to the throne of God and boast in heaven and say, I deserve heaven, I earned it, you owe me, God. You're my, in my debt. I earned heaven, and now you've got to give me heaven. That we, we can never be in that position. All the glory, all, all the credit must go to our great Savior God, Jesus Christ. And so that's how these words, grace and gift, um, are all uh, interconnected here, as Brother Eric said. Uh, so Brother, Brother Bill, I want to respond further to that, the word gift. Yeah, well, can I just say what you just said? You know, I totally agree. It's, it's literally suffering free. It's, it's unearned. You know, and that's what ties into grace. Because grace is unmerited favour, 
and this grace has given us a gift which is Christ Jesus and the salvation you know, that he brought through us. So yeah, they're very tied in, but yeah, there's three grasses. Okay, I would ask you to elaborate further uh, in, in, in this sense that uh, how do you think the word gift is possible to misconstrue it the way so many people that we encounter do when we tell them salvation is a free gift and then they want to uh, the answer us by saying oh, it can't be that easy, it can't be that simple, it can't be that free, there's something you've got to do why is it and, and, and how is it that people can misconstrue what a gift is in terms of salvation brother Bill? Well yeah yeah because unfortunately you know, especially, I know it's a strange scenario to bring up, but in regard to Christmas, you know, even when you're a small child, you get gifts at Christmas, but they usually, they're front-loaded by you've got to behave yourself. So that assumption from a young child is you've got to do something to get the gift at Christmas. And, and unfortunately, that, is, that has been, you know, in the psychology of people today, thinking, oh, yeah, it's a gift from God, so I've got to do something, I've got to behave, I've got to, you know, make sure I don't, you know, don't sin this week, you know, you know that sort of thing. And, you know, unfortunately, Christmas and things like that and the way human beings are in regard to giving gifts, they, they don't seem to be permanent, and there's always strings attached. But with God, you know, it's totally contrary. So that's how I would best describe the, the, the false meaning and, you know, kind of ideology behind, you know, a worldly gift. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I want to ask the rest of the, the panel here uh, to elaborate on that point is that when we look up the word gift in a dictionary, I mean, nobody misconstrues what a gift is, uh, and yet when we all of a sudden we, we look at the word gift in the scriptures regarding our salvation, um, how is it possible that so many people uh, will not recognize that it tr salvation truly is a free gift. We put our faith in Jesus and we get this, this gift. There, that it's conditional on our faith, but it's not conditional on our merit and our, uh, our, our own efforts, our works. Uh, Brother Eric first. Uh, well, Brother Luke, I know exactly how it happens. Uh, God has given us the precepts of salvation in his word. I call them the seven thunders. But others have come in and they've created doctrines. And they've said, this is the way to salvation. This doctrine is the way to salvation. But it's not. Only through Jesus Christ, by believing on him, do we come into salvation? And that precept is mentioned many times in God's Word. Okay, back to you. All right. Uh, Brother, Brother Neo, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of a, I'm at a, at a loss to understand how people could not get something so simple and clear. And, you know, I, it's a... Uh, is it could it possibly be that they're desperate? They're desperate to try to present another uh, another gospel, a false gospel. So they just choose to totally ignore and dismiss the fact that it's a gift. Sorry, my son's yelling in the background. Yeah, no, that's what I was trying to say in the side chat. Is like the rest of the world doesn't work that way, like Christianity does. Uh, Christianity works totally opposite of almost every other belief system on the planet. So it is hard to believe that there is a gift of salvation that all you have to do is accept it and not have to do any works to, to get it. You don't have to work to get it. The work's already been done. So there's no more working to do. And everybody else believes just because that's because the, the rest of the world works that way, that they have to work to achieve something. And, and Christianity is quite the opposite to me. That there's nothing to work towards to achieve anything. 
Yeah, that was uh, very, very well said. Uh, I, I know that uh, Brother St. Tommy wants to praise you on that. Go ahead, Brother St. Tommy. Yes, that is beautiful. That It is finished. He has done it. We are in Christ Jesus. We have been given. We have been justified. We have been redeemed. We are saved and being saved, and we will be saved even more. And we are sanctified, and we are being sanctified, and we will be sanctified more, all by grace, all by his unmerited favor, justly born by his blood and by what he did on the cross. And there is nothing that we or me, nothing I can do to add to that one righteous act by which many are made perfect. Uh, there's nothing we can do to improve on his righteousness that he gives us, whether we feel it or not, whether we act like it or not, whether we, we think we have been made clean and righteous or not as we grow. It is by his one act, and there is nothing to add unto it. Oh, yeah, we're called to good works, and may we embrace them. Oh, yes, we are called to depart from iniquity. And may we do it by beholding him and who we are in him. Brother Bill, you said, how is it? How is it that one would, would see the word gift and grace and then say, yes, but. Yes, but. What about works? We must do something else. We must depart from iniquity. We must uh, uh, dot all our T's and cross our I's. We must act holy. We must think holy. We must speak holy. Uh, we must be holy. Truth is, if we have been made holy, indeed we are holy. And if we have been made righteous spiritually, there's nothing we can do to add to that righteousness. And may we embrace maturity from a standpoint of righteousness if truly we have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. How can we turn away so quickly from the truth of what he has done for us and add works to it or maybe a false gospel of works? Some of our good neighbors, uh, some of our good, they may be good, good Mormon neighbors may come and hear the gospel even from our own lips and they would say, oh no, uh, you need to uh, believe in our institution and believe in our prophet and believe in these temple ceremonies and believe blah, 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 and present a false gospel. Some do come with false good news of works or believing in some other Jesus or believing in some institution. And may we uh, not be deceived. It is only by one act of righteousness that many were made perfect. I fear sometimes, my brothers, that a false gospel of sorts has even gone forth from my own lips in my youth, in my ignorance, in my partial understandings. When I first heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and believed it by the grace of God, I did not have understanding of much of anything of who I was or what my calling was or who we are in Christ Jesus I became frightened about what I experienced how can I be saved by my Lord if I do this in secret or if I feel that in shame how is it that I am saved and a great conundrum I experienced a great challenge great fear about who I really was. I did not understand that I was born again. Oh, I, I was new and I became convinced that it was necessary for me to strive and strain hard to get forgiveness that I already had. I became convinced that it was right and upright to, to feel very bad over these physical and temporal and youthful things that I experienced uh, as I grew out of them that, that I was required to feel like I was poop and that was the way to make myself forgiven again 
was to feel very bad and to proclaim to others you should feel bad also or you should do this and you should do that it's been a gradual process re, uh, understanding by the grace of God who I am in Christ Jesus I am NOT a cigarette smoker a defiled unclean sinner I am not what I eat I'm not a taco or what I experience I am a son of God because God has made me spiritually clean and righteous he God is righteous in making sinners righteous and he has made us clean in Christ Jesus how is it that so many are slow to see this and how is it that so many proclaim works or false gospels or add to the good news works uh, it's a gradual process I believe to understand what he has done for us he has done a mighty thing and may we bear it in mind as we walk by faith even as we stumble may we help each other up when we see each other entangled in in various immaturities or various things may we see each other as truly we are clean as guiltless because he has made us guiltless and and uh, may we bear him in mind and not be quick to turn away from that and quick to forget it's written in scripture examine yourself and see that you are in the faith and do not be quick to turn away do not be quick to turn away from who you are in Christ Jesus and who he is in you via the Holy Spirit yes thank you Bill thank you gentlemen mm -hmm. amen um, well it's beautifully stated I and I would say that uh, um, I, I, I'm sure we're all in agreement with everything you just said there I do want to back up to a brother Neo's statement because I think he probably has identified the source of our problem and he said that it was um, it's, it's just not the way the world works and uh, I would I would say use the term it's unnatural it's just not the natural thing and I remember once uh, years ago uh, a, guy, a, young, a friend of mine that's known me since my youth and knew of my uh, the way I lived my life before and he saw these changes uh, since I got saved and my ministry work and he, he was uh, talking to another Christian friend of mine so it's just I, I can't believe how much he's changed and, you know this is how I remember him and this is how he is now. I, it's hard to believe. And my Christian friend said, "Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just unnatural, isn't it? It's just unnatural, this change in him." And he said, "Yeah, it's just unnatural." And my Christian friend said, "Yeah, because it's supernatural. <laughs> it's supernatural, the change that God makes." And that gets back to my shirt, and that is brainwashed in Romans 12:2, how we are transformed by the renewing of our mind through the Holy Spirit working in us uh, but let me get to the back to the point about uh, there, there's a verse brother Bill maybe you can post this uh, for me here in the message section at Romans I mean um, uh, Romans 10 3 uh, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it. it it says that it says that people are trying to establish their own righteousness thinking that that's the way to get to heaven but it's that's not God's way God's way is not us trying to get to heaven through our own righteousness. Um, God's way is, is us putting our faith in the righteousness and work of Jesus Christ on our behalf. So the way of the world is through religions. Uh, all the religions of the world, there's really not a dime's worth of difference in them. They're, they're all telling you that you've got to earn it, earn heaven through personal merits, the merit system. And uh, as that's as, as Brother Neo said, that's the way the world works. You know, there, they, there's even a saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> so people think, well, you can't, you, can't, you can't go to heaven based on that. That, that, that that's just not natural. Okay, uh, Brother Bill, would you, would you uh, respond to this? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I've just uh, posted uh, also what ten three says in the King James, and it says, "For they being ignorant, so they're ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to themselves unto the righteousness of God." So they've not submitted to God's righteousness. What what is the creed over them? You know, and they're, they're, they're doing it through ignorance. You know, whether it's willful ignorance or just general ignorance, you know, that's that's up to the individual, isn't it? But, yeah, you know, I think that speaks for itself, that verse. And we see it all the time, don't we? And this is why I often say, you know, to people I talk to on Facebook or on YouTube, that to be a good Berean yourself, to see if these things are true. You know, don't be just spoon-fed, you know, your, 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 your dose of religiosity. Read the Bible yourself and just, you know, work it out. That was my problem as a young Christian. You know, I was spoon-fed from the front, you know, the pulpit. Hardly ever read me Bible and just assumed what they were saying is true. And it was, you know, years later of studying and, and going and reading the Bible quite a few times that, you know, the penny dropped and it dawned on me that what I've been told for many years was a lie. Or, or a lot of it was truth, you know, mixed with lies. But that's because I was ignorant. And, and, and I think that's the big problem. All right. Thank you, Brother Bill. I um, I want to give anybody a chance to make any final comment on the word gift before we move on to the next word. Uh, if anybody thinks you want to add any further to this discussion of the word gift, go ahead, and uh, otherwise we'll move on. Oh, my God, there's a demon, a white demon right behind our brother. Oh, oh, it's a poodle. Never mind. Excuse me. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, we've, we already have one comedian among us, his, uh, Brother Bill, and now St. Tommy is going to be a comedian, too? <laughs> It's my bad vision. I, I apologize. Um, I, sometimes I, okay. I, I see things as appropriate. Okay, the next, the next word, uh, I'll ask uh, Brother uh, Eric to comment on this next word f first. But uh, the word is a big, fancy word, but it's one of the most important words we find in the Scriptures, and the word is propitiation. Brother Eric? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you guys for uh, getting to the bottom of uh, the issue with uh, false gospels and why and how they come about. Uh, and thank you, St. Tommy, for your uh, soliloquy of salvation. That was beautiful. And here uh, is Rosie. My little uh, uh, Maltese uh, dog. Okay. Now, as far as propitiation is concerned, I used to know what that means. <laughs> so now I got me lawyers that uh, figures all that stuff out for me. Okay, go back to you, Brother Luke. Uh, all right. Uh, brother brother Neo, um the, the word propitiation, can you, can you expound on that? Okay. <laughs> Neo, come forth. Okay, uh, maybe he had to step away, so let me ask uh, St. Tommy. Uh, the word propitiation, uh, what yes, comes to mind? Go ahead. Oh, Neo is back? Okay. Neo, do you want to comment on the word propitiation? You get to take a try at that. Ooh. Oh, I thought we were still talking about gift. Anyway, no, go ahead. <laughs> I missed the last part. Where uh, I was just going to commend uh, Brother Bill for the whole gift thing, you know, because at Christmas time people are waiting for gifts. Like, you have to be good to get gifts from somebody else at Christmas time. You know, be good, don't be naughty or nice. Yeah, like Tommy's shaking his finger. But anyway, yeah, I'll, I'm going to get back to after. I'll, I'll let somebody else go with propitiation, and then I'll be back. Um, all right. Um, St. Tommy, what it, is propitiation? It sounds, like a, it sounds like a legal term, and I would 
guess that it has to do with uh, Christ Jesus legally uh, being sufficient for us to save us in every way in, uh, for everything and unto everything good but I don't I don't understand the word I'm, I'm kind of uh, uneducated like that but it sounds like a legal word propitiation uh, I can't even pronounce it yet I think uh, okay the the one thing that you said there that is really integral to the word and I'll ask brother Bill to take a comment on this further but is is the word um, sufficient okay I posted here what it says here just in terms of a definition, it says the action of propitiating or appeasing a God, spirit, or person. Um, that's what the definition is. But but propitiation in the, in the Bible regarding salvation and sin, uh, the word, the key word that uh, Saint Tommy used is sufficient. So, Brother Bill, I'll expound on that, please. Well, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll expound as you just said. Propitiation, it it, it does carry heavily the, the, the thought and the meaning of appeasement or satisfaction and in soteriological terms it was I'm trying to keep it basic it was all of God's wrath was poured on Christ at Calvary so he propitiated so God had to because he's holy and perfect and righteous he had to do justice and to do justice you know he had to have an offering, and Christ was that offering. So you know, the propitiation basically is what what Christ was for us. You know, all all of the wrath of God was poured upon Him. So then God was satisfied that with a sin issue had been fully dealt with, because it was all laid on Christ. It's very similar to atonement, but the propitiation itself it always entails wrath. So so. You know, in legal terms, you could say, say I robbed someone from, you know, 20 quid off someone. There had to be a propitiation somewhere. There had to be a legal, you know, sorting this out and dealing with this. And, and, and this is what had to happen with, 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 with God. You know, he had to, he's perfect. he couldn't just turn aside and ignore sin. He had to make, payment had to be made. Christ was that propitiation. So he was propitiated upon it's a real complicated word, but basic terms, Christ was our propitiation, and it appeased God, and God was satisfied that Christ was the perfect lamb to absorb all the sin of the world. That's all I'm it, because it's a real deep theological. All right. Okay, thank you, Brother Bill. Uh, there's uh, satisfied is the word that Brother Bill used. God is satisfied. Uh, St. Tommy used the word sufficient. These are both words that can help us understand the, the, uh, what propitiation means regarding our salvation and sin. Um, another concept that we were familiar with is the slogan, paid in full. Uh, propitiation, that, that's what it's telling us, is that there's nothing else that needs to be done. Sin has been... Um, paid for completely and, and when Jesus says it is finished I mean there's nothing else to be done it's totally propitiated now regarding the um, idea of uh, atonement um, I, I'm not going to attempt to uh, do a, a one-hour teaching on the difference between atonement and propitiation I there's someone uh, um, oh what's the name of um, the, the, the Jewish rabbi that became a Christian minister I have on my channel. Uh, uh, let me look real quick at my channel here. Sid Roth or somebody? Sid? No. Aaron. Aaron. Aaron Budgen. Yeah, Aaron Budgen. Thank you. Aaron Budgen, if you go to my uh, playlist, of my list of channels that uh, I have my favorite channels, uh, there's one called Aaron Budgen. And he grew up as a Jew, was studying to be a rabbi, and became a Christian uh, preacher and teacher. And he's excellent. Uh, and um, uh, he did a 
very thorough teaching on the difference between atonement and propitiation, and that, uh, in as briefly as I can, atonement is a temporary covering that is not a permanent solution, and propitiation is a permanent solution that never needs to be addressed again. It's, and it's as Jesus said, it is finished, it's sufficient, it's uh, satisfactory, uh, it's paid in full. So that's that's what we need to understand about propitiation. Now, who, who do we have here that just joined us? The Christian anarchist. Um, uh, let me see. I want you to make sure that you've uh, read the uh, uh, the rules of the hangout and that you are in agreement here. Uh, Christian anarchist. Sir. Christian anarchist. Can you respond to that? You you did read the rules to the uh, the uh, hangout and you're in agreement with all points. Parts of it I'm going, I was going to continue reading as soon as I got that got into okay, it. Well, read read it completely and then let me know if you're in, in disagreeing with any part of it. Uh, right. My hangouts my hangouts are different than St. Tommy's and many others where it's not open to people of all different viewpoints. I, I insist that we agree on certain core doctrines and and uh, so make sure we agree because since I don't I don't know you. All right, and then if you let me know as soon as you uh, read that. Uh, okay, uh, St. Tommy or anybody else who wants to talk more about propitiation before we move on. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm on strike until uh, our good brother, Christian Anarchist, is approved. Uh, All right. Okay, him. all right, we'll ask uh, Brother Bill, go ahead. I think we covered it, I think we did basically cover it, and I think, you know, satisfaction... You know, re, re, you could sum it up there quite easily with that, that, that God was satisfied with that one-time sin offering for all. You know, once for all. It says it in Hebrews, it was a sacrifice once for all. And I think that that would sum up propitiation lovely. Okay, Brother Bill, I see there's a couple of verses posted here that have the word propitiation. Could you read those to us so we can now, now that we understand propitiation, let's read it in co context of these verses. Will you do that? Yep, yep, yep. Brother Neo posted the first one, and uh, you know, and that is, you know, where, where it says, you know, here's the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yep. You know, that 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 just tells you, as we just you know been explaining, you know, it is satisfaction that that. that God was satisfied with that once for all, you know, sacrifice. And it was a perfect appropriation, and it was, you know, finished. You know, it was finished. I like how uh, the Brother Luke said it. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, the opposite of atonement. In a way, uh, it's not, it's, it's, atonement is a limited thing, or like a temporary thing, as propitiation meaning a permanent thing. That Jesus did for us. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a um, that is the distinction. And but what I find is that and what we're talking about all these words here today is we need to understand what the words really mean, how they apply to us in the Bible, but also how they are. Some of the times they are commonly misused, and uh, that I think the word atonement today. It's very, very common that it, they, people think it is interchangeable with propitiation. And I don't really object to it, um, uh, to, the, to them uh, taking it that way. But from what I learned from Aaron Budgen, uh, I, I'm convinced that there is a distinction in, between the two and that atonement is a temporary relief and propitiation is permanent and, and, and uh, sufficient for all time. Okay, so, uh, okay, so now let's... Uh, uh, did we get the Christian anarchist uh, yet to complete the? Yes, sir. All right, so you're you're good to go, huh, brother? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, welcome. Uh, why don't you take uh, just uh, 30 seconds and say hi to everybody and introduce yourself? And uh, I want to ask you one question though: Have you uh, listened to what we've covered so far? You know what we're doing today? No, I was looking through a. Uh the list of Google Hangouts, and then I noticed that this was probably the only Christian one that I saw was on the list, so I figured I'd join it. Uh, okay. All right. Very good. Uh, I'll bring you up to speed here in a minute, but first introduce yourself to everybody. Thank you. Shalom. 
my name is Christian Anarchist. I am a Christian apologist, evangelist, uh, follower of Christ. I make uh, videos on YouTube to concern the ministry. I have my own shows, Theological Discussion and Apologia versus Atheism. And I'm only trying to provide a spiritually honest conversation between theists and non-theists alike. All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Um, so the next word, what we're what we're doing, um, and how do you want me to refer to you, Christian Anarchist? Do you want me to use that acronym, or, or I mean that uh, name, or something else? Yeah, you can call me what you want. Okay, I'll Whatever call makes you, you comfortable. Okay, I'll call you Christian Anarchist then, since that's <laughs> it'll be easy to. If I forget, I can always read it. Huh? Right. Um, so what we're doing is here, I've just made a, a collection of words and terms that we're, uh, I'm just putting forth a word and then asking everybody to respond to it in terms of what they think it means and how it, how it applies to us biblically, uh, because some of these words are, are people don't understand what they mean and they're misapplying them. So uh, uh, let's repost this for his benefit, um, because when you first come on, I guess you don't always... Uh, you don't get to see what was already previously posted, do you, according to Brother Bill? Let me, right. let me put the words up again here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Okay, those are the words I put. Now, if anybody has other words you want to add to this that you think are um, uh, would be helpful to discuss, you can add them to the list here. But so far, we've discussed the name of Jesus, grace, gift, propitiation, and atonement. And now we're on the word sanctification. So um, uh, starting with uh, Christian anarchist, uh, what comes to mind uh, when you hear the word sanctification? Well, I've heard the term, but I haven't really uh, had it explained or defined for me as concerns of theological matters. I I don't know about anybody else, but I uh, that was a little audio was a little garbled. I couldn't follow that. Could you say it again? Uh, hang on, can you hear me now? Okay, just making sure. Sometimes my computer ends up doing that for some retarded reason. Um, so I've heard the term sanctification get used, but I've never actually understood it or had it defined in matters of theological perspective. All right, very good then. I will ask Brother Bill to go first then and uh, tell me what he thinks of the word sanctification in the biblical sense. Well, in the biblical sense, it's you've got two schools of thoughts, you know, entire sanctification straight away or gradual sanctification. In other words, that's been made righteous, but not of self. It's been made righteous by someone else. So we've been sanctified by Christ. We've been made right by Christ. So it's, it's very similar to, to, to righteousness, but not, if that, like, very similar like we were talking about propitiation and atonement. They're, they're very similar but they're not the same, if that makes sense. You know, and I'm trying to get a word that, that would make it easy to understand. I suppose the easiest way is to be to be made holy, or to be set apart, or to be consecrated. It's them sort of things. So, you know, when we're sanctified, you know, we, we have been set apart, you know, we've been made holy, and we've been consecrated to God, you know, that that is the basic meaning of sanctification. In theological terms as well, you have two different sorts. You have some that believe, you know, that we've got to be sanctified by, you know, doing good, etc., etc. That would be the Roman Church and work salvationists. And then you have the other theological school, which I belong to, and I assume all us in this room do, that, that we're made sanctified and holy and right in God's sight the mean, you know, the, the moment we believe in Christ. But it basically means set apart to be holy, to become separate or consecrated. Well, like regeneration? Yeah, it's very similar. Very, but that's, yeah, but that's, well, so that, that's a more of a, I suppose, a reformed term. 
you know, regeneration, but because it, it it entails not not an immediate thing. You know, regeneration in reform terms would be, you know, gradually regenerated from day to day and from strength to strength and faith to faith. Whereas yeah. sanctification has the, you know, the emphasis that it's an immediate thing when we believe on Christ, we, we are set apart. We have become adopted children. We've become sons and heirs, you know, with Christ. So it, it's an immediate thing. Mm. We, we've become holy the moment that, that on Christ. Right. Well, it, as, a ref, as a reformer myself, I end up taking the view that it's an immediate uh, thing. I just believe that it was uh, laid out beforehand, though. That's just yes. the only difference, I guess. So. Yeah, even within the reformed field, you should have Armenianism and Calvinism and, and some reformers who are not even right. So it's, it's, that's why it's easy just to say sanctification means we're set apart or holy, because when you get into other words, you know, it can complicate the matter, can't it? Okay, let me uh, uh, give Brother Eric a chance to comment on this, and then I, I've got some things to say about it. Brother Eric? Uh, well, sanctification. The Lord uh, prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So uh, we can be sure that uh, the sanctification process uh, is contained in his word, and we can explore that further. Okay, back to you. Um, all right, I, I posted here just uh, putting up the word sanctification to get a definition of it, and it says sanctification is the act or process of acquiring sanctity or being made or becoming holy. So I think that definition expresses um, uh, two things that we've already brought up. One is that you are being made holy. Uh, the other question, though, is, uh, is it a, a one-time instantaneous thing or is it a process? Even in this definition here, it says that uh, it's the act or process of acquiring sanctity or, or being made or becoming holy. So um, I am, uh, I, I kind of like several other things, uh, words and concepts and doctrines over the years, I've uh, changed my mind a little bit on this, and I thought of sanctification as being a process of growing mature into spiritual maturity after we get saved. We are being sanctified, um, but I, I think that the correct way of seeing sanctification now is, uh, as Brother Bill and also uh, Christian Ar anarchist, you've said it's like regeneration. It's an instantaneous thing that happens that when we first get b believed, we are regenerated, we are uh, brought to life spiritually, you're born again, and, and sanctified, made holy, once and for all. Uh, and so, but there are people that think that uh, there's two sanctifications. There's the instantaneous sanctification, and then there is also a process of sanctifying in, during your lifetime. And I'm not going to split hairs or argue about that, but... Um, uh, anybody want to talk further about sanctification before we go on? Uh, Brother Luke, I just noticed in John seventeen nineteen, Jesus says he sanctifies himself. Can we uh, uh, look into that? Well, yeah, it means he separate because sanctification that means set apart. So Jesus is set apart to himself. So although he was. God manifest in the flesh on earth, and he was with us, Emmanuel, God with us, he was still set apart from us because he was God, and we're not God. So there's that aspect as well. So yeah, yeah, this is why, when you say sanctification, I always say it's holy, it's set apart as well, because it, you can, if you just say holy, then that wouldn't make sense, that whole sentence, you know, where he goes on, that he's sanctifying us for his, you know, his word, because his word is truth. And then him saying he's now separating himself from, you know, it wouldn't make sense unless you could distinguish between the, the, the holiness that is, you know, imputed and the righteousness that imputed to us and the being set apart that, that God was God. 
So yeah, very deep theological <laughs> stuff there, but that's why you try and get as much as you can in you know, the context as you can in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the verse you cited there, I'd have to go look at it in context to be more confident, but but I, I think that uh, when Jesus was talking about him being uh, sanctified, it was being set apart for a particular mission. He was separated, that's that's what he was uh, 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 sent to do. And uh, uh, But it may be that uh, Brother Bill's correct about set apart, He's uh, that uh, I think how you phrase it is that he is God, he's separate from us and that he's God and not, and we are not. Uh, but it, it does, another application of the word of course is being set apart. And we are set apart, uh, every person who is born again, uh, we are made holy, and, but we're also set apart because we're unlike the rest of the world who hasn't been made holy, who hasn't been sanctified. Uh, anything else before we go on to the next word? Yeah, I'd just like to say thanks, uh, Bill and Brother Luke, for uh, bringing that uh, word to light. That's very uh, enlightening. Okay, back to you. All right. Um, okay, I, I think I'll do one more word here and then uh, end this. I've been trying to, Brother Bill, since I've been doing these daily. I've changed the uh, kind of the format to be just a one-hour broadcast. I went a little longer this time because we had some new people I wanted to have a chance to talk to. But um, as a rule, I'm going to try to do them for an hour each day. Uh, but uh, so let's go with one more word, and the next word on the list is justification. Uh, do we see any difference between sanctification and justification? Or are they interchangeable? You've suddenly frozen there. You're still there, Luke. Can you hear me now, brother? Yeah, yeah, you're there now. Yeah, yeah. You suddenly froze okay. out. Okay. Um, uh, the the question. I'm gonna, did you hear me talk about doing one last word? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I got. I, I did. did okay. get it. I was just going to respond. Right. I'm not sure if you could hear me or not. Yeah. The the last word is justification. And I want to know if uh, you think that there is any uh, difference between sanctification and justification, or can we use them interchangeably? I think very similar to the words that the justification has got uh, legal terminology with it. Like, so when, when we're sanctified, we're set apart and we're made just, we're made righteous, we're made holy. But the act of, you know, the justification itself is that. The, the the kind of the legal sense that would be made right, would made just through Christ and what He has done for us, and, and it's almost in legal terms, you know, legally, you know, you are guilty as a sinner and you need to be punished. Then the next legal term was, was propitiation, and then as a result of the propitiation comes in another legal term which is justification, that we're now made just and we're innocent. You know, just if I never sinned was what we used to, you know, call justification. I hope you remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I said that to my viewpoint of the word um, sanctification is different than it used to be. And uh, I view it now as uh, not a process, but, a, but as a instantaneous uh, sanctification and made holy and acceptable to God. And because of that, I would say that they are interchangeable words, justification and, and sanctification. Uh, and I think that Bill is right, that justification would be a, a, the same thing, but saying it in more of a legal jargon. Um, but one thing I do like about the word justification uh, is that uh, you may have heard this, it's, a, it's just a cute way of playing with the word to understand the meaning, and it means justification, means just as if I've never sinned. Uh, so w when we are justified, and because of our faith in Jesus, God sees us just as if we have never sinned. Uh, and so um, now, uh, Christian anarchists, you do you, what about, I asked you about sanctification earlier and you weren't sure, but what about justification?
he said, oh, I forgot, he said, be right back. Maybe he had stepped away. Um, uh, Brother Eric, anything to say about justification? Uh, well, Brother Luke, uh, first of all, uh, maybe we should uh, say hello to Brother Stephen. <laughs> I, I was going to do that right after you made your comment about justification. Okay, uh, now uh, it seems to me uh, justification is pretty straightforward and simple, uh, just like God's plan of salvation is. And, uh, uh, okay, back to you. Okay, I want to say another thing about justification, but without further ado, let's say hi to Brother Stephen. I, I think he says his microphone is not working. Um, so uh, I guess his camera's not working either here. I just see his icon. But uh, if you're able to talk, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, it's nice to see you here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was pretty funny. <laughs> okay, um, now I forgot what else I was going to say about justification. Um, um, all right, I'll pray you all think of it again in a minute, brother Bill. Anything else to say about justification? While I'm while I'm hoping my thought pops back into my head. No, not really. Only what we've, you know, we've covered. You know, that is, you know, it's an act, a claim, or a statement of that. You, you know, someone has been made just or, or right in, in, in God's eyes. You know, in other words, we're innocent. You know, someone who's guilty has been made innocent. You know, we've been absolved and acquitted of all, all sin and all crime, which is which is pretty handy. <laughs> all right, so. Um... Uh, Christian anarchist um, had stepped away. Um, I want to give you a chance to respond to this, but uh, did you hear anything we said about justification? Uh, we we were comparing it to sanctification. Did you hear any of that? Uh, no, I just got back. All right, well, let me ask you then, without the benefit of hearing what we've said, I'd get your reaction uh, to, uh, you heard what we said about sanctification, and now I'm asking the question, are justification and sanctification interchangeable words, or is there a distinction? Well, it depends on how the words are defined. That's, that's what we're trying to do, define them and, and uh, come to that conclusion. Uh, um, we've, we've said that sanctification is a, an act or process of becoming, be, being holy, and we've, I think we've all agreed that uh, it's an instantaneous thing uh, rather than a process. Um, and then justification, um, uh, we've, we've said that um, uh, it's more of a legal term for the same concept, that you are justified. That means that you are considered just, uh, innocent, and uh, and just, if, uh, just as if, justified means just as if, you'd never sinned. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so anything to say about that? And, and uh, Well, I think the term of, uh, well, what was that? sanctification and uh, justification are definitely different terms. I believe that um, justification is the sense of the... Uh, concerning acts, concerning the legal matters, which the Bible says we are, uh, we would be justified if we believe in Christ, and with that case, that's sort of the uh, things our sins have been erased, our slates wiped clean when we believe on Him because we have uh, been washed by the blood of Christ. But concerning sanctification, that's concerning the things of holiness, being aware of God in the sense that we are able to accept him, willing to accept him, because we see uh, the grace of God that is irresistible. So that is my view on both those terms and how I view how they've been defined.
All right, I just uh, looked up the word justification, so we get the definition. It says, the action of showing something to be right or reasonable. Um, it's in theology, the action of declaring or making righteous in the sight of God. Um, one of the things that I've, uh, I, I like to um, use this word and this concept for is to show people that, look, um, let's, if you died right now, and you, most people, people, even if they don't see biblical Christianity the way that we do, a lot of people believe that they die and they get judged by God and they got to kind of plead their case. And uh, the question is, what would you say to God if he said, why should I let you into heaven? Uh, uh, what justifies you coming to heaven? And most people will try to justify themselves through their personal merit. They'll say, well, I, I'm, uh, I, sh I should be in heaven because I did this and this and this and this. Things, these are the things I did that justify me. So it's self-justification. And, and so what we know about uh, Christianity is that our, we're, we're justified because of Jesus, not because of ourselves. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, make that the final word on the, the study today. We'll, get, we'll have... a uh, plenty of other words to add to the list uh, in the days to come. Uh, but for now, uh, any final words on the word, any comments on the word justification, uh, and then we'll uh, finally do our summary, summation here. No, no, I think we covered that quite well. Okay. Um, now you see the list there I have. Uh, uh, if you want to save that list um, so you have it uh, and think of any other words or terms that, that would be good to add to the list, then go ahead. I added this. Brother Bill, did you see the, the one I did yesterday? No, no, no. Okay, yesterday I did uh, the same thing uh, on, a, on a few words and terms. And uh, I, what I'm doing is I'm adding these to my playlist that I started to uh, 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 words have, have meanings and I, I have one or two of your videos on there where you show I think repent or believe or faith and I hope you'll matter of fact I wanted to put more of yours on that playlist but they're not available on your channel so you need to provide them if you so I can add them to that playlist words have meanings um, but so if you think of any other words or terms that I think will be a benefit to discuss in this way then uh, make a note of them, and we'll add them to the list. And uh, we'll we'll finish today by just uh, telling people the, the most important thing they need to know. I, I mean, getting all our terminology and our definitions and understanding of uh, these biblical terms uh, correct is is very very important. There's an awful lot of confusion, and and um, and uh, people have come to the wrong conclusion because they don't even understand the meanings of these basic words and terms. But really the whole point of all of this is we need to understand what, what, what we must do so that we can go to heaven when, after we die. It really boils down to that one question. Uh, what do you have to do if you want to go to heaven when you die? So I'll ask Brother Bill to answer that question for all of us. In simple terms, you know, if you're asked what do you need to go to heaven, you don't need to do, you know, religious somersaults or, or go through hoops or join a church or, or promise to be a better person or behave yourself or clean yourself up or, or just go through religiosity. You know, in simple terms, to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's really that simple. And because we've been defining words, I think it's only right that we, we, we define what believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is. And firstly, before we even get to that, why we've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all is why we have to, and that's simple because the word said we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that the wages of this sin is death, which is separation from a love of God. And God, because he loves us, desires that none of us be separate from him. He desires reconciliation. And, you know, the first thing we need to realize that is that we're a sinner. We've, we've missed God's perfect mark. You know, God is holy and he's perfect. He's set apart right up here. You know, and without Christ, 
you know, of all our best effort, you know, all the good things we do, all the church attendance we do, and all the clean our own lives up, you know, we'd be lucky to get to there. So we fall short, you know, we miss the mark, and that's that's what sin is. And you know, but because God loves us again, you know, and He didn't want us to to to, to be in a, a state of, you know, being separate from Him forever. You know, He came down for Earth, you know, for for one purpose only, and that was that He would die that we may live, and that He would offer us a free gift of eternal life, and including that gift is is reconciliation. It is, is adoption, is son or daughtership, and it is many, many blessings involved in that. But that's a free gift. You know, the, the word says, for by grace you say through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So when you get to the point where you realise you're not holy and perfect like God, and you realise that you need to, to, to be saved, you need someone to, to help you, you know, to, 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 to have restored this relationship between you and God, that's where the gospel really kicks in. That's the good news. That in actual fact, you don't actually have to do anything. There's nothing you can actually do except for just believe that this Jesus Christ who loves you dearly made payment for all your sins 2,000 years ago at Calvary and that he died and he was buried and then he rose again the third day in, you know, in resurrection power. You know, having defeated sin, death and hell itself. Now, if you believe on that Jesus Christ, you will be saved and you will be welcomed into heaven and you will become my brother or you become my sister. You know, do, you know, you need first realise you're a sinner, you can't save yourself. And then most importantly, realise, despite all this and in spite of all this, that Jesus Christ is that very saviour who is more than willing and more than sufficient to save you right this second. You know, and, and I can't, you know finish this 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 good this real good gospel message off without mentioning you know an actual account you know in the book of acts you know and that's the philippine jailer and, and i mention this every time because brilliant you know it's actually the only time in the bible where a direct question in regard to what must i do to be saved is asked and a direct answer is given but the scenario is this you know the apostles were in a prison okay all in size. I was in a prison and there was with other prisoners as well, it wasn't just them, and there was an earthquake. And as the earthquake shut, all the chains come off these prisoners. You know, and the Philippine jailer he, he panicked. Because under Roman law at that time, you know, if, if a single prisoner escaped, you know, his sentence would be death. Alright? And to the point where, you know, where he thought they was gonna escape, you know, he drew his sword and he was just about to kill himself. And then, you know, <laughs> Paul said, no, what are you doing? Don't do that. I'm paraphrasing it. Don't do this. All right. And then the Philippine jailer says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Not what should I do or could I do or can I help myself being saved? He just asks, what must I do? What is the, 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 the bare bones of what I must do to be saved? And they just simply said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. So I pray that, you know, that you would, you would do that this day. You know, not that you'd draw a sword and want to kill yourself, but you'd ask that question. You know, you, you, you'd say, what must I do to be saved? Be honest with God. He knows everything you've done, you're doing, and you're going to do. Just be honest with him. You realise you're a sinner, you can't save yourself. Ask him that question, what must I do to be saved? And bring back to memory what we've said today. Even open a Bible up, you know, and then just read for yourself. You know, if you've got a Bible at home and you're not a believer, but you are you know, inquisitive, you know, go, go to the book of Acts, chapter 16, and verses 30 to 31, you will find that very answer right there. <laughs> Ask that question, read the answer, then simply believe on this Jesus Christ this day, and you will be saved. God bless, and I hope you do it. Okay, all right, brother, thank you for that. Uh, that's the... That's what we call an invitation to receive the free gift of salvation. And if you watch this, uh, you know we talked about uh, uh, the grace, uh, gift, uh, justification, sanctification, all these things. So that that should help you understand what what this uh, free gift really is. And that is that uh, um, you don't have to do anything to to get it except 
believe on Jesus. Put your faith completely in Jesus. That's all we're asking you to do. That's all God asks you to do. This is the one requirement, faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for uh, participating, brothers. And uh, I, I'm trying to do these every day, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I'm not positive tomorrow will be available. I might have to do Wisdom Wednesday on Thursday instead. But I, I, I'm, I'll either uh, do that tomorrow or Thursday. So uh, join me each day, 1 p.m. Pacific time, uh, for these uh, discussions. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.